Hello everyone. I'm Morimichi Kimura from Tohoku University in Japan. Today, I'd like to discuss strain aging and brittlement of structural steel, which is part of my master research. First, let me talk about the background of this study. These days, with the increase in logistics business, buildings that require large areas and spaces, for example, large scale logistics facilities are increasing. In such buildings, in order to use space more efficiently, high strength steel column is used for frame because it can offer excellent strength in a small cross section. Among steel columns, press column shown in this figure is manufactured by welding two steel plates bent in U-shape and is widely used because it can avoid various problems associated with welding. Therefore, it is necessary now to improve the performance of press columns. However, there is an intrinsic problem in press columns due to their nature. It is called strain aging which is a phenomenon of embrittlement over time due to dislocations introduced into bent section of press ground. A strain aging mechanism was proposed by Cotteret and Bilby as follows. First, in the manufacturing process of press grounds, steel plate is bent by bending machine and dislocations are introduced into bent section of press ground by bending process. There are interstitial suit atoms, such as carbon and nitrogen in steel. And these atoms diffuse over time and segregate around dislocations to form a high concentration suit atmosphere called cotteril atmosphere, which represses the mobility of dislocations. When the mobility of dislocations is sluggish, metal is less likely to be plastically deformed. And the strength of a bent section increases and toughness can be deteriorated. In general, there is a trade-off relationship between strength and toughness in materials. Therefore, it is necessary to overcome strain aging in order to improve, improve the performance of press grounds. Based on these backgrounds, the development of structural steels that suppress strain aging phenomenon is desired. Then, the purpose of this study is to experimentally investigate the embrittlement of structural steel by strain aging. In this study, as a first step, we investigated the effects of nitrogen, which is the most crucial element on the issue on strain aging by using laboratory manufactured steel plates. Then as a second step, we investigated the effect of mechanical properties and microstructures on strain aging by using commercial structural steel. In section one, I will explain about the result of laboratory manufactured steel. Here is the flow of the experiments in section one. At first, four alloys were cast by vacuum melting to fabricate steel ingots. And then hot rolling was performed to make steel plates with a 20 millimeter thickness. Tensile test specimens were taken from the plates and pre-strained uniformly by tension, which introduced dislocations in steels. The levels of tensile strains in this study are 0, 9.5, and 14.5% in plastic strain, respectively. Then, heat treatment is performed at 250 degrees Celsius for an hour to promote the diffusion of interstitial solid atoms. This heat treatment is called as aging. Room temperature long-term strain aging phenomenon is simulated by tensile strain and rather high temperature and short-term aging experiment. Sharpie impact tests Picas hardness tests and X ray diffraction for dislocation density measurements were performed on the samples prepared. The dislocation densities were measured by X ray diffractions with the MWHWA, 
modified Williamson hole boring average method. Table 1 shows the chemical composition of samples. The upper lines in the table show the target values of casting, and the lower ones show their values analyzed. In this study, four samples were manufactured in the laboratory with a variety of nitrogen contents, 10, 30, 40, and 50 ppm, respectively. The results of the Sharpie impact test are shown here. First, on the 0% strain, agent can rather slightly increase the absorbed energy. The reason of this increasing the energy is assumed to be associated with recovery of dislocations by heat treatment or precipitation of solid carbon, for example. Then, at a strain of 9.5%, the absorbed energy decreases by aging at the nitrogen contents are 40 ppm or more. With a strain of 14.5%, the decrease in absorbed energy by aging is similar to the case of strain of 9.5%, but is eminent indeed particularly at above the nitrogen content at 40 ppm. The decrease is quite large at 50 ppm. Therefore, it was found that the absorbed energy at zero degree, zero degree Celsius decreases when the amount of nitrogen is 40 ppm or more. Then, the influence of nitrogen on fracture appearance transition temperature, FATT, is shown here. FATT is defined as the temperature at which metal fracture transits from ductile fracture to brittle fracture. This we can say that the higher the FATT, the lower the toughness. When the strain is 0%, FATT decreases by aging. While when the strain is 9.5% and 14.5%, FATT increases by aging. In this study, FATT was seen to evaluate the toughness of steel not only at zero degree Celsius, but to find further quantitative toughness property based on wide temperature range of Sharpie, impact, Sharpie fracture appearance. We have found here particularly that when the strain is 14.5%, 14, 14 FATT is increased by aging, even when at a lower nitrogen content of 10 ppm. The result of the vigorous hardness test is as follows. The left side shows the measurement results of sample without aging. And the right side shows the results of sample with aging. From the results, it can be seen that vigorous hardness increases due to work hardening as the pre-string increases. Then you can see that in addition to work hardening, Vickers hardness of aged samples is further increased due to aging. The relationship between the dislocation density rho and yield stress sigma y is shown in this graph. In this research, yield stress sigma y is obtained by conversion of the Vickers hardness values. The blue line in the graph was drawn according to the established equation proposed by Takagi et al. They obtained this on the thin plate of cold rolled steel, which were made through the completely different process from one in the present study. However, the experimental plots obtained in this study surprisingly agree with Takagi's equation, regardless of the difference in the manufacturing processes. From this result, the validity of this location density obtained in this study was confirmed. And it was suggested that yield stress can be expressed by this location density, regardless of the plate thickness or processing method. I'd like to summarize section one. In section one, we investigated the environment of structural steel due to strain aging by using laboratory manufactured structural steel. From the Sharpie impact test, 
it was found that the absorbed energy in the Sharpie impact test decreases when the nitrogen content is 40 ppm or more. And that FATT increases even when the nitrogen content is 10 ppm, when the free strain is 14.5%. This suggests that even with a nitrogen content of 10 ppm, steel can be brittle due to strain aging. The relationship between yield stress and dislocation density is in good agreement with Takaki's equation, and it suggests that yield stress can be expressed by dislocation density, regardless of the plate thickness and the processing method. In section two, the effect of microstructures on strain aging is investigated by using commercial structural steel. The flowchart of this experiment is shown on the left. First of all, plates were manufactured by two methods, TMCP and ASRO. Next, in order to reproduce the bending deformation in the bent section of the press clamp, a steel plate with a thickness of 28 millimeters and 40 millimeters is bent and the dislocations are introduced. The bending process is the performed as shown in figure eight. And the size of bending radius R as a factor of two or 3.5 of the plate thickness. Then aging was performed as shown in the figure. <coughs> then aging was performed at 250 degrees Celsius for an hour to promote the diffusion of interstitial solid atoms. By applying pre-strain and aging, the strain aging phenomenon that occurs at the bent sections of press plants can be assumed to be reproduced. Then, mechanical tests and metallographic tests were performed on the prepared samples to evaluate the material properties. On table two shows the chemical composition of steel used in experiments. The nitrogen content of TMCP and azrol are different. And azrol also has a higher manganese content. In the mechanical property test, the strengths of steels were evaluated by the tensor tests. Then the microscopy revealed the microstructures of samples. And the Baker's hardness test evaluates the conventional hardness. Then, nanoindentation further examines the environment of each microstructure component. In tensile tests, proof and tensile strengths were measured. The sampling position of tensile test specimens was half the plate thickness. By the nanoindentation hardness tests, the hardness of each microstructure was measured. Schematic image of nano indentation hardness test is shown in figure 11. An indenter is placed on the sample, and nano hardness can be identified from gradient or the load displacement curve, as shown in figure 12. A type of microstructure can be observed by using SPM images, shown in figure 13. Let me move on to the ex let me move on to the results. Here is an example of a result of optical microscopy of TMCP steel. 2T represents the bending radius R, where T is spread thickness. There were two phase microstructures of ferrite and pyrite, and no significant changes were observed by aging. Here is an example of the result of optical, optical microscopy as low to steel. There were also two phase microstructures of ferrite and pyrite, and no significant changes were observed by aging. Thus, from the optical microscopy, it can be said that microstructure change cannot be a major factor of the mechanical property changes due to strain aging which can be easily assumed, of course. Next, I'll explain the results of tensile tests. 
the relationship between plastic strain and tensile and proof strengths are shown in the figures. Plastic strains here are the, uh, represented with the averages of strain applied to the tensile test specimen based on very simple assumption. The effect of aging can be seen on tensile and proof strengths in TMCP steel. But the effect of aging was found to be rather smaller in as rolled steel. Mm -hmm. As received TMCP steel in this steel has, in this steel has lower strength than as rolled steel. So it is considered to be more affected by aging and cannot be considered to be an interesting nature of TMCP. Here is a graph showing the relationship between weak gas hardness and tensile or proof strengths. The blue circles in the graph represent unstrained TMCP steel, and the orange triangles represent bent and aged TMCP steels. The gray squares represent unstrained as rolled steel, and the red crosses represent bent and aged as rolled steel. According, according to these results, as rolled steel has higher tensile and, tensile and proof strengths. And you can see that tensile and proof strengths increases as vicus hardness increases in age samples. So it is confirmed that strengths increase due to strain aging. The so results of non indentation hardness test are shown in figure 16, and which is our major outcome in the present study, indeed. The horizontal, the horizontal axis of the graph shows plastic strain, and the vertical axis shows non indentation hardness, HIT. From this result, you can see that non indentation hardness of both ferrite and pyrite increases by aging. And the relationship between nano intentional hardness of aged sample, HIT aged, and the plastic strain was formulated by linear regression analysis as equation one and two. Considering to these two equations, it was suggested that hardness increases of pyrite is slightly more susceptible by strain agents than that of ferrite. Section two can be summarized with this slide, but I'm not going to review it to avoid the repetition. Here is the conclusions of this study. In this study, the embrittlement phenomenon of structural steel due to strain aging was experimentally investigated. As a result, we found that steel can brittle due to strain aging, even with a nitrogen content of 10 ppm. And yield stress of aged steel can be expressed by dislocation density, and the relationship seems to be universal. And from the nano indentation hardness test, hardness of pyrite is more likely to be increased by strain aging than that of ferrite. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to your questions and discussions.